हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर
A very good morning to all of you. I, Dr. Priyanka Guplani, welcome you all to the online impact lecture series sponsored by MOE's Innovation Cell AICT New Delhi. Today, the topic of discussion is future scope and potential of herbal nutraceuticals. So for that, I would like to introduce our speaker of the day, Dr. Samir Sapra, who is Senior R&D Associate, Pisic Herbals Badi. His job responsibilities include standardization of herbal e extracts and herbal products with reference to the marker compounds, isolation of marker compounds by column chromatography and flash chromatography from the herbs and characterization of markers by NMR, IR, UV and mass spectroscopy. Qualitative and quantitative analysis of raw materials with reference to marker compounds, setting up limit of marker compounds in RMS and FPS, development of new formulation and addition of new herbs with reference to marker compounds. He has published more than 20 articles in different national and international journals, three patents and is reviewer of many reputed journals. He has supervised nine UG, 12 M form, and three PhD candidates. He has also isolated few compounds like chebulonic acid, gardenin, virginin, catechin, Z Google styron, and three acetyl 11 keto beta boswalic acid. I welcome you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I request you to, sir, to please take over. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Priyanka, for, uh, for the brief introduction. Uh, again, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, the topic is like future scope and potential of herbal nutraceuticals. Uh, so the, uh, actually, currently I'm working in Pisic Herbals based at Baddi. So the concept behind uh, the, uh, the concept behind uh, 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 with the, uh, work, while working with the company is uh, like uh, we we are developing unique combinations of herbs, uh, but for uh, particular uh, diseases like uh, arthritis, like am I audible? You are audible, sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, we people are developing uh, some unique combinations uh, based on uh, uh, herbal uh, nutraceuticals. You can also say that these are phytopharmaceuticals uh, because uh, we are exclusively working on uh, uh, nutraceuticals which are based on uh, herbs and uh, particularly phytochemicals, uh, which are uh, particularly active. Uh, acting on a particular, uh, for particular disease, like for uh, arthritis, as uh, we are working on some uh, uh, phytochemicals of Boswellia serrata, uh, that is AKBA. And similarly, we are also working on uh, some uh, liver acting, uh, disease, uh, for some liver diseases, uh, one of the constituents is silymarine. So, uh, so the concept is uh, we are developing something uh, unique and uh, which is very effective. Uh, so, uh, majority of uh, so the uh, the topic uh, of uh, herbal nutraceutical is particularly why I have chosen this uh, topic uh, because uh, uh, as I discussed with Dr. Ashwari Dhingra, the majority of audience is like B for final year students and uh, faculty members too. So uh, why uh, the thing is uh, uh, this is the field when uh, uh, when a student uh, when he moved from uh, B form to like higher studies or maybe uh, he started choosing his career in different fields. So this is one of the field which is very niche and uh, uh, like uh, there is lot of scope in uh, this particular uh, field that, that is herbal based nutraceuticals and uh, I'll share with you how people are uh, working on these herbal nutraceuticals. The concept is uh, why people have chosen these herbal nutraceuticals. Uh, so the first thing is uh, my slide is not moving actually.
think that there is some issue with my slide. Actually, my slide is not moving. I cannot shift my slide from one to two. Sir, again, share it. Uh, okay. No, the slide is not moving. Uh, just give me one minute. Yes. So, uh, as everybody uh, must be aware of nutraceuticals, basically this is uh, nutrition and pharmaceuticals, a combination of nutrition and pharmaceuticals. Uh, there are a number of further uh, divisions in uh, nutraceuticals, as I mentioned. Uh, like uh, these are functional foods, you can say that uh, you can say that uh, foods which are giving nutrition, uh, and there are dietary supplements too. Dietary supplements like uh, which you can consume in the form of like tablet capsules or maybe some in some other form. So nutraceutical is a broad category, and uh, under nutraceuticals, I'm going to particularly I'm going to discuss about you uh, with you about uh, this plant-based herbal nutraceuticals, and you can also say that phytopharmaceuticals. Uh, so, so, sec so if I talk about uh, nutraceuticals and particularly plant-based herbal nutraceuticals, uh, broadly these are uh, like, uh, you can say that flavonoids, flavonoids which, uh, which are derived from number of plants, uh, like you can say that citrus, uh, citrus flavonoids, bioflavonoids, uh, like asparagin, diosmin and uh, routine, and uh, other, uh, there are a number of other bioflavonoids. Uh, these flavonoids, these particularly comes under the category of nutraceuticals. And uh, like this, there are uh, there is uh, there are phenolic compounds. You can say that tannins, gallic acids, ellagic acids, and other number of phenolic acids which are derived from plants. And uh, of course, curcumin. This is the most uh, potential uh, uh, molecule. Uh, which is huge in demand, not only in India, but worldwide. And uh, it has proven uh, uh, antiseptic and anti-inflammatory activity. So the lo lot of scope is there. If uh, someone can work on this curcumin, uh, like uh, uh, there are a number of aspects. People are already working on uh, this curcumin, uh, like uh, increase uh, enhancement of solubility, enhancement in solubility, and uh, in fact, isolation of curcumin, curcuminoids from uh, Turmeric, and uh, likewise, there are uh, other uh, one other categories pro and postcyanidins. These are basically again phenolic compounds, but uh, uh, majorly derived from uh, uh, you can say say that uh, you can say that like grape seed extracts, pro and postcyanidins. Rich in uh, grape seed uh, extracts uh, formulations available, uh, and uh, which are which contains pro and and uh, you can say that uh, uh, the still people are unable to uh, work on these pro and uh, The demand is so high that uh, sometimes it is difficult to fulfill the demand. And uh, likewise, carotenoids, carotenoids uh, majorly like. Uh, your lycopene derived from carrot, tomato. Again, uh, people are uh, uh, there are a number of formulations which contain majorly lycopene, and people are doing multi million and multi million business uh, with uh, these uh, lycopene molecules. Apart from this, there are saponins. Again, these are part of nutraceuticals, which are majorly again derived from uh, your uh, you can say that uh, number of uh, plants. Uh, like uh, you can say that uh, tri uh, 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 trigonella, phonium, lithium, uh, methidana. And uh, apart from this, there are other number of like uh, shatavri, asparagus, racemosus, and other number of uh, plants from which you can get these saponins. And again, these all molecules are part of herbal nutraceuticals, phytopharmaceuticals, and even the single, single molecule is of multi-million worth and multi, in fact, you can say that multi-million worth. And uh, people are doing a lot of export, in fact, uh, of all these phytochemicals. And uh, 
single molecule people are manufacturing there are number of uh, industries who are exclusively working on only single molecules they are only like curcumin there are companies who are only isolating curcumin and uh, they are doing export lot of export so the demand is huge the scope is huge the market is niche and uh, there is lot of scope and uh, the the best part is these all are uh, very safe molecule and majority of these nutraceuticals are almost having grass status generally regarded as safe so uh, so a lot of scope again uh, i'm telling you and the and next is why nutraceuticals are required nowadays uh, first thing is uh, in india this, the, the, these particularly uh, these figures are uh, belong to india only there are more than 300 million people are under nourished in india and the major reason is poverty and they cannot afford to purchase these uh, nutraceuticals so uh, if a government or maybe some other body can find out a solution how we can uh, 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 we can add nutraceuticals in our uh, daily routine in life uh, then uh, uh, the scope could be uh, like uh, you cannot even imagine and second is uh, there are number of people like more than 500 million people in india who are calorie sufficient but they are nutrient deficient because uh, they are consuming calories but uh, they are they have no idea uh, that they are uh, deficient in uh, nutrient as uh, uh, you must have uh, listen to a number of people like uh, uh, majority of people are deficient in vitamin d3 uh, so and calcium deficiency uh, so there are people who are calorie sufficient but yes they are nutrient deficient and the reason is uh, again poor uh, now the lifestyle has changed so there are poor eating habits and lesser information about uh, the things like uh, if someone is calcium defi- uh, deficient he doesn't have that idea that he has to uh, get, get the checkup done maybe within 6 months or maybe uh, yearly once in uh, once in a year So, uh, so this is the reason and uh, only 80 million people are over nourished or you can say that they are uh, uh, have, they are consuming nutraceuticals and they can even they can afford and they have uh, complete information uh, how to keep uh, themselves uh, they can keep themselves uh, over nourished so uh, so again based on these requirements you can say that uh we we should work on nutraceuticals and uh, we can develop some paths by which we can fulfill the gap uh if i talk about global nutraceutical market uh it was valued around as mentioned 413 billion in 2020 and the uh, projection is that it would reach 650.5 billion by 2030 with a cagr of 3.9% from 2021 to 2030 so uh, the data is like uh, there are number of other uh, projections are available but uh, you can say that this is the minimum uh, growth which i mentioned the the cagr of 3.9% it could be it could reach to 5% maybe 6% from uh, 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 by 2030 because uh, in india this uh, particular field is like like and particularly after covid 19 this field is uh, getting a uh, lot of scope and uh, people are really aware about uh, the nutraceuticals so again scope is tremendous yes so the reason uh, uh, why nutraceuticals are required again uh, the uh, habits are, have changed like sedentary lifestyle because uh, uh, earlier there was no luxury uh, but people now it is people are having sedentary lifestyle stress due to work due to overwork and due to other number of reasons and no doubt radiations <laughs> are the major uh, reason uh, which are the major reasons for number of uh, diseases so uh, uh, again and uh, shift from uh, your healthy food to uh, to junk food people uh, nowadays especially uh, young population they prefer to 
uh, have uh, junk food and uh, you can say that uh, breads and uh, uh, which are which, which doesn't have any nutritional value they prefer to consume uh, junk food so uh, because of these reasons uh, you can say that uh, nutraceuticals are uh, required and uh, earlier uh, people were uh, people were consuming nutraceuticals uh, because of their own uh, preference but nowadays if you ask from someone nutraceuticals are an essential requirement uh, people have to consume nutraceuticals because our food our uh, vegetables fruits everything is again uh, nowadays somewhat contaminated and uh, so, so there are a lot of contaminations and so because of these reasons you can say that nutraceuticals are the part of life and if i talk about uh, nutraceuticals uh, plant based nutraceuticals uh, you can see there are nowadays there are number of uh, plant based nutraceuticals which can be used for number of diseases in fact for muscle building for you can say that uh, uh, immunity uh, enhancers and uh, again so there are super foods which can fulfill all your uh, nutritional requirements and uh, the uh, e commerce sites are uh, like they are working uh, on these things and uh, yes lot of people are uh, uh, coming into this field and they are selling these products online and uh, uh, for almost each and every disease you can say that although you cannot say that disease but uh, for uh, uh, prevention and for uh, to keep themselves yourself healthy all these nutraceuticals are required uh yes uh if i talk about general trend as i told you the scope is tremendous you can see that uh, there is one uh, uh, article which i when i was uh, searching for the things then i, I uh, went across uh, one article there are number of startups we started only in 2018 and uh, they are uh, into like uh, they are having a turnover of uh, uh, they are having a, a handsome turnover uh, right now so the article is uh, published on march 2022 as you can see that so there are number of uh, 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 startups and uh, in fact you can say that celebrities they are also uh, investing in this uh, nutraceutical based products uh, because this is one of the area which uh, which is high in demand and uh, in fact obviously people are earning a lot of money from uh, these uh, herbal based nutraceuticals the only thing is we should understand the concept uh, we people are pharmacy pharmacy people we can uh, easily understand the things and uh, this is our field and we can do lot of things in our field if we choose our field strategically and uh, precisely uh, so these are some of the startups you can google it you can google all these startups you can see how fast they have grown from 2018 in fact there are few companies who turned into multi million uh, dollars uh, in uh, during covid time only uh, like flix oziva kapiva fast and up olina these all are indian startups and uh, they started in lakhs now the turnover is in uh, in uh, crores in inr so uh, the scope again the scope is tremendous Uh, oziva like these companies are uh, working on plant based uh, nutraceuticals fast and up uh, during covid 19 uh, they have prepared number of formulations which can enhance the immunity so again the scope is uh, tremendous and uh, you can work on the things so again uh, those were the startups but there are number of companies i mentioned few of the companies though everybody is aware about Uh, these companies these are uh, major uh, uh, companies who are uh, into this uh, herbal based nutraceutical fmcg products you can see that like dabur himalaya uh, they started from uh, uh, classical formulation uh, uh, classical formulation but now they move uh, they are also working on classical formulation but uh, as they aware about the things that uh, the scope is in nutraceuticals so they launched number of products 
related to nutraceuticals and uh, the scope again uh, uh, they are doing like uh, uh, anything and ensure ensure is one of the uh, uh, product of uh, abbott and uh, abbott is also into number of uh, nutraceutical based products uh, which uh, they almost cover each and everything so these companies are basically formulation based companies again the scope is if you can formulate something which is uh, based on nutraceutical and even uh, there are number of companies who are manufacturing for these companies you can say that there are number of third party manufacturers they are again doing in uh, uh, millions and billions uh, uh, and that is again very near to you in ponta side there are number of companies who are manufacturing exclusively nutraceutical based products like zeon tirupati uh, so they are specifically manufacturing for this abbott again other number of companies too and uh, if i talk about uh, conclusively if i talk about the potential of nutraceuticals uh, like for our new uh, our b pharmacy final year students if they want to choose something uh, their own business or if they want to do something in uh, nutraceuticals so there are number of verticals on which they can work uh, like one of the vertical is uh, people are also doing trade of this raw material nutraceuticals based raw material like soy uh, herbal raw material and uh, herbal based raw material and uh, even you can cultivate your own raw material uh, which can be used uh, in nutraceutical formulations or even people can prepare extract of those formulations and uh, again second is uh, in nutraceuticals you can uh, develop nutraceuticals or extract nutraceuticals in fact you can develop phytochemicals from herbs and which we, you can add in uh, nutraceutical products and uh, even uh, even as, uh, working on a single product is uh, more than sufficient uh, like if you can develop one isolation process for, for one of the, one of the flavonoid or maybe for one of the phenolic compound that is more than sufficient uh, for the entire life because the, again even a single product is uh, you can calculate that product into multi millions and billions and so uh, you can develop and second thing is uh, for uh, there are number of companies who are exclusively doing analysis of uh, all these nutraceuticals products like assay heavy metals pesticide residual analysis they are working on amino acid analysis so there are number of uh, companies who are doing who are purchase who are getting products from companies and they are doing only analysis of all these products by hplc by uv by gc by gcms by icpms uh, so uh, and again uh, if someone wants to work uh, in these companies again the scope is good because very few people are working on uh, this uh, nutraceutical based companies and final uh, is formulation if someone can formulate products as i mentioned plant based phytochemicals for number of diseases uh, so so again uh, uh, the scope is uh, tremendous and the uh, growth is uh, uh, like anything uh, so basically these are the market potential of nutraceuticals and uh, if i could share with you my story we people i am uh, always uh, working on these nutraceuticals and in fact i am also working on these extracts i am developing unique extracts in fact there are number of extracts we uh, which we people are purchasing from china and maybe from other countries even india is not uh, manufacturing those extracts but the scope is uh, tremendous and we can develop techniques we can develop raw material chain in india and we can develop our own extracts uh because uh, uh, the only reason is why people are not doing in india because uh, lack of awareness lack of uh, expertise uh, otherwise we are full of india is full of resources and uh, we can develop number of products we can uh, develop num uh, number of phytochemicals in india and uh, yes uh, we can do export of all these phytochemicals extracts too and uh, uh other apart from that we can formulate uh products from uh, of these phytochemicals and extracts too so uh, uh, apart from this there are other number of things
too. So uh, I, I will uh, not discuss much about regulatory authorities. Uh, for in India, if you want to work on uh, these formulations or maybe in phyto, uh, phytochemicals, nutraceutical chemicals, for these, you have to go for minimum requirement is FSSAI. Uh, and uh, you need to get uh, FS, uh, FSSAI certification of, uh, uh, yeah, approval for uh, this uh, formulations and for uh, herbal extracts. Apart from this, uh, apart from this, uh, there are number of certifications which you can get, like ISO certifications. And uh, if uh, ISO certification 9001. 22,000 and other number of uh, certification. Yes, if you have to uh, go for export of these nutraceuticals, you need to have a uh, halal uh, certification, kosher certification. These are country specific, specific uh, certifications which are required for particular uh, countries. Uh, so uh, uh, apart from uh, these things, uh, again, I'm telling you, if someone can could develop something which is new related to nutraceuticals, then uh, the scope is tremendous, huge, and uh, in fact, uh, the area is niche. Rather than working on uh, allopathic products, uh, you can choose this field too because uh, uh, the, there are very few companies working on, uh, still there are very few companies working on these nutraceuticals and uh, they are unable to fulfill the demands which are required because people are getting aware of uh, the things and a uh, lot of uh, uh, improvement and a lot of things are coming up in uh, nutraceuticals and uh, in future uh, uh, the scope would be like equivalent to allopathic products so uh, if someone would like to start at this stage, especially after B pharmacy, uh, you could even choose your career in this in this field, and uh, you can work on uh, these uh, nutraceuticals. And uh, yes, uh, the field will be different, and uh, uh, you can get a lot of uh, exposure. And uh, yes, uh, scope is again, uh, as I told you, huge. So this is all about. Uh, uh, my presentation, nutraceuticals scope, and uh, again I mentioned with I mentioned with you a brief of all these things. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are a lot of things which I can share with you. But as uh, you are B pharmacy students and uh, faculty members are also there, uh, if we can work on uh, precisely on these nutraceuticals, uh, we can choose our path independently. So this is all about from my side. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Ajay, if anybody have any questions, you may ask. Students, if you have any questions. Any of the faculty members, if you have any questions regarding the procurement of nutraceuticals or how to use them about the standardization. So there are two things. One is the topic is very boring or you have to understand someone. I think. Nothing sir. It's very simple the topic. It's not like anything. It was so simple. I kept it so simple so that everybody could understand. And, uh, yes. Uh, uh, in fact, there, are, there must be a number of questions. So if someone can ask. <laughs> Uh, 
sir, you may ask any questions if you have. Okay. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, you have nicely shared about the entrepreneurship in herbal and uh, pharmaceutical and nutraceutical. I have one question that uh, how much it cost to start a herbal product plant setup? What are the basic requirements for the setting up herbal plant extract? Uh, uh, for, setup? Uh, for extractions or maybe for of pharmaceutical or nutraceutical? Uh, for nutraceutical or pharmaceutical. Hello? Uh, are you asking about extracts? Particularly for extracts or for pharmaceutical uh, for uh, nutraceutical formulations. Uh, if you are asking for a setup uh, for extraction unit, a, a different setup is required, and for formulation unit, a different setup is required. Uh, because for extraction, you have to extract particularly uh, a particular phytochemical or maybe a particular extract. And the setup is entirely different from formulations. So, uh, 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 which one you are asking about? Which one for extraction unit or for formulation unit? Uh, sir, suppose we are going for the herbal extracts. Extracts, exactly. For herbal extraction unit, it depends how much capacity is required, how much, uh, and uh, it depends which phytochemical. If you uh, if you only want to extract, you uh, only want to prepare uh, extracts. Then again, in extract, there are number of other bifurcations like which yes, extract. Sir. Yes, sir. Suppose we are uh, we we are we are going to uh, set up a plant for the volatile oil. Yes. For volatile oil, uh, it depends because uh, it depends upon volatile oil. And if you can say that in INR, it uh, would be around uh, for a small setup. Uh, like if we can keep two uh, vessels of uh, an initial vessels of uh, like my, maybe 5 KL and uh, with uh, with condensers, primary and secondary condensers, the initial investment would be around uh, 1 to 1.5 CR. Minimum. That is minimum. Only I am talking about only machinery, not uh, other expenses and uh, not the utilities like boiler and all that. Boiler. There are number of utilities required along with the extraction unit. So if I talk about only machinery, it would be around one one year, minimum one year, okay. except utilities. And sir, is is there government is providing any? Uh, you can say government is offering any scheme for the setup or new yes, for yes, a new. There product. are uh, schemes, but you can go through uh, in fact uh, site websites, uh, Haryana websites, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, it it depends uh, what type of like uh, for mini food parks. If you talk about food uh, unit, uh, that again comes under nutraceuticals. For five, uh, they are actually developing clusters. For five, uh, for mini food park, uh, uh, which requires 10 acres of land, uh, and uh, five companies, they are uh, uh, giving subsidies of around, I think, 50 to 60%, uh, which I heard uh, from a number of people. But uh, exactly, uh, you need to go through the website, Haryana website, and you can get uh, aware about it. What are the regulatory requirement uh, required for the same, sir? Uh, for uh, your uh, nutraceutical products, uh, initially minimum FSSCI is required and uh, GMP is required uh, uh, to start with. And uh, if uh, you're working on uh, herbal based like uh, products, uh, typically herbal based products, then I should uh, uh, licensing is also required. And apart from this, if you want to export, then there are some certifications, additional certifications. If you really want to export to some of the uh, countries uh, like Malaysia, maybe some other related uh, countries, you need halal certification. Okay. So from a student point of view, uh, if uh, Suppose we have isolated a particular constituent, then what are the studies to standardize it or to say that it is a particular constituent only? Yes, for particular constituent, it depends what type of constituent it is. Like if it is phenolic, if it is flavonoid, uh, you can go for uh, 
for pure molecule, molecule if it is new you need to go for nmr and uh, nmr uh, your uh, mass ir and uh, if uh, the compound is not new uh, then you can uh, you can just go for uh, for assay estimation you can go for hplc along with standardized uh, along with marker compound and you can get the assay done so it depends what type of molecule it is if it is a volatile molecule you you have to go for gc for that particular molecule uh, for standardization and uh, 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 and believe yes 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 you can uh, you can yeah. continue yeah and believe me if someone can develop something which is already in market and if someone can isolate a product uh, which is in market in huge demand and someone can uh, simplify the method of isolation commercial particularly commercial method not uh, lab developed method commercial method if someone can develop then uh, the scope is huge uh, and uh, uh, people can get it paint, uh, patented and uh, uh, they can even sell to someone if someone can develop a simple process suppose if i talk about uh, preparation of fire corticoside which is a combustion process if someone can develop a simple process but uh, for fire corticoside so uh, then uh, they can uh, uh, they can uh, in fact uh, keep their own uh, equations uh, for selling of uh, their uh, their process and uh, likewise nicotine which is one of the product in high demand right now and if someone can develop a process for purity of nicotine and other number of things then uh, yes the scope is tremendous and uh, they can uh, work on their terms and conditions Ah, uh, sir. If uh, we don't have, have the marker compound in much amounts, so we if we are going to prepare the formulations, then we can use the plant extracts also. Uh, if you don't have uh, marker compound in a uh, uh, higher concentration, you can even work on uh, working standards. Working standards means fifty percent purity, forty percent purity. You can calculate accordingly on working standards. Even if we uh, are working with extracts, it's not the same thing. Uh, no. If you are working with extracts, extracts with particular uh, phytocostigen, you must be aware about that how it is present there, uh, like in thirty percent concentration. If you really want to work with the working standards, and again, this is one of the business. There are few companies who are only isolating the uh, extracts, preparing extracts thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent. They are standardizing those extracts fifty percent, and they are telling that we are providing you uh, your working standards. Like uh, there are companies who are only giving fifty uh, percent purity with an uh, with analytes, uh, with a uh, with a pure A uh, with analytes. Uh, they are only providing fifty percent, and uh, they are doing business of only these working standards. So again, like, is, uh, means business. we have to procure the extracts from the companies. If we are preparing extracts in a college only. And we are standardizing it with the help of marker compounds, and it is the same thing, or we yes. will get something different no, from the company. This is the same thing. This is the only thing required is you need to have marker with you okay. uh, uh, of particular purity. You should be sure about the marker that, that this particular uh, marker is uh, this much pure. You can purchase from Sigma and maybe some uh, from reliable source and uh, along with certification. So you just have to prepare extract in your lab. And uh, you just get it uh, tested. Okay. Yes, in fact, there are number of companies who are manufacturing extracts, and they are claiming total flavonoids, total alkaloids, total phenolics, uh, total. Uh, in fact, they are giving total tannins. And there are number of companies who are manufacturing these uh, total tannin-based products like Amla. Uh, companies are se uh, selling this twenty percent tannins. Oh, And your tannins for a body poly, five percent bitters. They are only mentioning. So uh, what you have to do is, uh, if someone is working on, again these are basic things. If someone can work on these, suppose if I am giving you five percent bitters from uh, uh, tannins for a body poly, this is one of uh, you can say that this is one of the broad parameters which you are checking for uh, tannins for a body poly, five percent bitters. Even your mamodi ka cherencia contains five percent bitters. Neem is Bitters. If someone can add bitters from uh, neem to uh, uh, your uh, giloy, tannins for a body poly, you cannot help it. So what you can do is, if you can standardize that particular tannins for a body poly extract with, uh, like tannins for a soil, only then you can authenticate your extract. So again, uh, again, I am telling you, the there is lot of scope. 
there are a lot of things that you can do and uh, there are number of projects on which you can work you can give give it to students they can develop their own extracts and they can present before the companies no i am not telling you big companies even to the smaller companies uh, those who are really in need of standardized herbal extracts there are number of i'm telling you there are number of companies who are struggling for standardized extracts because they are getting extract from number of sources and they won't be able to recognize whether they are getting a standardized extracts they they they, they are not getting convinced so uh, we, what we can do is if we can help them in prepare application of standardized extracts and we can give them standardized extracts uh, like with reference to a particular market compound then this would be a huge work even in uh, export market uh they uh, there are number of companies they won't accept this 5% waiters 20% tenants they are uh, asking about uh, they are uh, majorly asking about a particular uh, phytochemical like if i have if they want tinospora cordifolia they want concentration of tinosporoside in that particular extract whether it is present in 0.2% 0.3%, 0.5%, but uh, at least they want to standardize that particular extract with a particular reference marker compound. So this is the basic concept, and only then you can get an effective formulation, and uh, you can remove adulteration if you can add these things. And uh, in fact, uh, this is not about uh, like people uh, think that. Uh, uh, uh like we are working on plants like pharmacology people are thinking that what we people are doing uh, rather than uh, rather than in pharmacology we are working on uh, these phytochemicals but this is not like the thing uh, if they can initially if they can develop something which is based on a particular phytochemical and then they move ahead, ahead for the particular uh, uh, activity yeah maybe immunity enhancer maybe for stress maybe for some other maybe for some fever for tinus for a cordifolia then but then they can work on the things and that will help uh, help in uh, helps in uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, removal of uh, your uh, you can say that adulterated products as well as uh, adulterated raw material as well as adulterated extracts <coughs> so this is the concept basically Sir, one question from side: Is there any difference between uh, flavonoid and phenolic compounds? Although both are having OH group in their structure. Uh, I am not getting. I am not getting it. Uh, sir, uh, question from student side: What is the yes. basic difference between flavonoid and the phenolic compounds? Phenolic compound, uh, phenolic compounds are a broad category that covers your tannins, gallic acids. In fact, uh, uh, phenolics like the resveratrol, other compounds. But uh, flavonoids are part of phenolic compounds. Okay, and uh, one another is are, are plant extract are safe, and if yes, at what extent? Uh, it depends what type of plant it is if you talk about uh, uh, citrus bioflavonoids or maybe citrus extracts uh, they are they have already claimed that these these comes under uh, grass status there are number of volatiles which uh, which comes under grass status but there are number of extracts which uh, you can say that uh, at higher concentration uh, they uh, they are poisonous so it depends what type of extract it is. Uh, no, not every extract is uh, uh, harmful, but not every extract is. You can say that uh, uh, there is a myth that uh, they doesn't have any side effect. There are side effects, but it depends in how uh, in how much concentration you are getting and uh, what are the uh, constituents uh, present in that particular. Like uh, you, you must be aware about colchicine. Colchicine, if it is present in higher concentration, although it is used for gout treatment, but uh, in higher concentration, uh, it, there are some side effects. 
so so it depends which plant it is i think colchicine also possesses anti cancer potential exactly exactly there are number of plants which are having anti cancer potential but yes uh, you need to identify in how much concentration you have to administer okay so one more question sir uh, what are the uh, is there any guidelines for quality control for herbal product that can be accepted globally it depends what type of uh, extract it is uh, there are quality concerns uh, obviously quality concerns it's suppose, not like suppose, uh, sir we are talking about osimum centum extract yeah 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 like uh, if i talk about extract only uh, there are some quality uh, quality concerns uh, first thing is if you are preparing extract in which uh, uh, solvent you are extracting it like uh, if you are uh, extracting it in uh, methanol water extract then you need to identify the uh, like uh, how much residual is present and uh, methanol residue is present and second is microbial contamination again uh, you need to check the source of water uh, is there any contamination from water source so uh, it depends these are the quality concerns and apart from assay like in case if you want extract if you are preparing extract of uh, uh, tulsi uh, the few people are asking about arsolic acid content uh, this much arsolic acid is required minimum required in tulsi extract like 2.5% 5% so these are the quality concerns with the extract Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you, Priyanka. It was a nice and informative session, sir. Thank you, thanks a lot, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Ashwin Tinga to give vote of thanks, please, sir. Thanks, Dr. So good morning, everyone. With due respect, I would like to express my sincere thanks towards our worthy speaker, Dr. Smith Sapra, for sharing his valuable talk on the topic on entrepreneurship in herbals, pharmaceutical, and nutraceuticals. Sir, you have wonderfully dis discussed various aspects about entrepreneurship in the area of herbal pharmaceuticals as well as nutraceutical. Apart from this, uh, you have addressed all the questions of the participants as well as the faculty members. You also explain uh, in deeply the, the process and the key ideation techniques, prototyping, and the future aspects of uh, entrepreneurship in terms of pharmaceutical research. Uh, it was very informative session. And I think the lecture delivered by you provide a fruitful insight for the benefit of all participants. A big thanks to you uh, for your valuable efforts and uh, sharing your time with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Priyanka, for choosing me for uh, discussing about these nutraceuticals. Because again, uh, uh, if someone can uh, think about these nutraceutical products, uh, the uh, there are a lot of things people can do. Although allopathic uh, people are majorly focusing on allopathic products, and uh, but uh, my humble request to my friends uh, like. Uh, and Dr. Ashwini Ringra, Priyanka, and other faculty members to please guide uh, our students, our uh, young brigade for the nutraceutical sector because uh, the field is uh, niche. And uh, but the uh, the thing is, uh, they are very less concerned or they are uh, not aware about uh, this field. And very few people are aware about this field. And uh, uh, again, if someone can start working on these nutraceutical based products, 
these are almost like the business is like almost like equivalent to uh, allopathic products and uh, again uh, initially people were consuming nutraceuticals just for as a dietary supplement as a supplement but nowadays people are people started taking precautions and uh, uh, especially in urban areas uh, because of uh, stress and uh, overwork people started choosing nutraceuticals as uh, for precaution uh, as precautionary treatment uh, so uh, so if someone can work on these nutraceuticals uh, then uh, definitely uh, the people will success will be successful because in india nutraceutical now is the time for nutraceutical uh, things and uh, but in uh, if you talk about in abroad people are already about uh, aware about these nutraceutical products and uh, they are very much focused on these nutraceuticals especially herbal nutraceuticals and uh, the 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 cons- So, uh, in case uh, any student, if someone uh, personally wants to discuss with me related to nutraceuticals, I'm all, I'm always available. You can share my uh, contact details, my email ID. Uh, they can discuss with me. I can uh, uh, I can help them in uh, in the things if they choose the uh, this. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. We will surely work towards this and also guide our students to work towards nutraceuticals, but your guidance will be much needed. Sure, 100%. Thank you. Sir, one question is from the student side that what are the IPR concerns regarding this nutraceuticals? How we can go for that? IPR, it depends. Again, there are a number of factors. IPR doesn't mean uh, IPR. If you talk about uh, extracts, extraction process, if you are developing something new, extract or maybe some new phytochemical isolation from the plant, you can go for patent of that particular uh, particular process uh, with purity and particular process. If you formulate something uh, uh, like if you increase uh, solubility and non solubility, uh, like people are working on curcumin because curcumin is in huge demand, as I mentioned you earlier. And uh, now people are working on solubility enhancement. Like people are working on nanocurcumin because curcumin, the major issue with curcumin is less solubility. So there are a number of companies who are working on curcumin solubility. And what they are doing, they are doing their own, uh, they are getting the patents. And in fact, they are, uh, after patent, they are preparing their own brands for curcumin. And uh, uh, now they are selling their brand. If suppose they develop one uh, one uh, uh, curcumin, highly soluble curcumin, what they are doing, they are preparing their ABC brand and they are selling their ABC brand to a particular company and they, they are mentioning that ABC brand in their formulation. So this is the concept. If someone can work on these things, they can get it patent and they can sell it to, the, they can sell it to some companies that you have to just add my name, my company name. Uh, my brand into your formulation, and they will do it. If it is a thank you, thank you very much, sir. It was a wonderful session again. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, all the participants. We shall be meeting for the another session at eleven fifteen. So be in touch with us. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much, sir. Once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.